All right, we're it's time to uh, go through the skeletal muscles uh, in the body that we're responsible for knowing. Uh, there's over 600 muscles. Of course, we're not going to go through 600. Uh, we're just going through many of the prime movers in the body. I'm guessing maybe 50 or so. Uh, and for each muscle, you'll see a, a picture of it on a figure next to it. Um, you're responsible for labeling, but uh, that's more lab, right? And lab will be labeling muscles on pictures for the most part. Uh, you'll see the origin and insertion of that muscle, although you're not responsible to regurgitate the origin and insertion. Uh, what we are responsible for are its actions, and you'll see the actions in italics in that muscle. Uh, so that's what you should be mindful of right? when we're going through these muscles. Also look at the groups. Like, what are the breathing muscles? What are the hamstring muscles? What are the quadricep muscles? What are the rotator cuff muscles? So grouping muscles and knowing their actions uh, is kind of the way to, to go through this. All right, next few slides will be muscles of facial expression. So these are muscles that are not pulling on bones, but instead pulling on soft tissue in order to move the soft tissue of the face to make a facial expression, like a smile or or uh, raise eyebrows or a uh, squint, right? That that type of thing. Uh, so this first muscle is called the epicranius or occipitofrontalis. Well, now we're thinking occipital bone and frontal bone, and that's exactly where this muscle travels from. So you'll see a muscle belly here, frontalis area. You'll see a muscle belly on the occipital bone, occipitalis. So the entire muscle is called the occipital frontalis. This muscle happens to have a wide, broad uh, connective tissue sheet that connects the two muscle bellies. That is called an aponeurosis, a sheet of fibrous tissue here. Uh, it's like a wide uh, piece of connective tissue. You'll see that in the abdomen as well when we get there, these aponeuroses. Uh, but uh, it's, it exists in this first muscle we're going through. So it moves the scalp, right? That's the action that you see in italics here, the action, you can pull it forward, it can pull it back, and that allows you to do things like wrinkle your forehead or raise your eyebrows. All right, some other muscles of facial expression. All three of these muscles, uh, looks like two, but there's a zygomaticus major and a zygomaticus minor. Uh, there's also a depressor anguli oris, so let's explain these. All three of these muscles will insert onto the corner of the mouth. Right, uh, the zygomaticus major and minor will pull up on that corner because its origin is on the zygomatic bone, the uh, the cheekbone. So here's one muscle, a zygomatic muscle. This is the major; it's larger, and you can see that small one that I'm covering with my pointer here, uh, right above it. That's zygomaticus minor. Both those muscles will pull up and laterally, right on the corner of the mouth from either side. And guess what that, that's going to do? Raise the lateral corners of the mouth? Well, that helps you with your smiling expression. And just the opposite, depressor means pulling down. Oris is the uh, muscle term for mouth instead of oral. We have oris because uh, muscles tend to end in is and us typically. So pulling down the mouth at an angle, depressor anguli oris. Uh, here it is right here. It's pulling that corner of the mouth down. At, a, at an angle, and doing that well allows you to frown or or grimace, right? Kind of the opposite of the of the smile. So these muscles are antagonists of each other, right? When one's uh, contracting, the other one is lengthening, right? And 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 vice versa. All right, this is the last slide on muscles of facial expression, and we have three more to go through. The orbicularis muscles, there's oris and oculi. Orbicularis would be a circular muscle, which we can see around the eye. Orbicularis oculi, which contracts to close the eye. And then around the mouth is the orbicularis oris that contracts to close the lips. Last on here, we have a buccinator, weird pronunciation. You might remember in chapter one, buccal region is the cheek area. So there's your B-U-C -B for your cheek, um, except it's pronounced differently here. Buccinator um, is a muscle that's in your cheek. It's actually your cheek muscle. And you see it right there, buccinator. I wouldn't really trust this pointer 
it's, it's sort of deep in there. We'll see a picture on another slide will give us a good view of the buccinator because it's, most of it's covered by these, these other muscles here. But your cheek muscles, you compress the cheek to uh, say some words, uh, to whistle. Uh, when you're chewing food, you can maneuver the food in your mouth between your teeth. Right, that's the action of the, the buccinator. So we'll see uh, buccinator again when we go through uh, the chewing muscles. Now the proper term for chewing is mastication. And there's specific muscles that are involved with mastication, right, or chewing. So first, on this first slide, we're gonna look at the two prime movers, right, primary muscles that close your jaw. And we saw in chapter nine that jaw closure is called elevation. Uh, so which muscles pull up on the mandible, right, in order to close the jaw? Well, here's the two. The masseter, M-A-S, right, for chewing, mastication. Masseter is the prime mover of jaw closer. You can see it here. The origins on, well, mostly on the zygomatic bone, right, inserts onto the mandible, onto the, the body and the angle, right, of the mandible. So when this muscle contracts or shortens, it's going to elevate the jaw, right, or, or close the, the jaw. Uh, your other prime mover, two prime movers here to close the jaw, and by the way, that's the uh, the action, jaw closure or elevation. Uh, the other muscle is temporalis, which is a muscle on the temporal bone. It's a convergent muscle, as you can see, a very broad origin, all these fascicles that all converge onto uh, a part of the mandible, not the condyle. I don't know if you remember the condyle, that forms the TMJ joint, but there's another process that you can't see because the masseter is in the way, uh, called the coronoid process. You might recall, well, all these fibers will insert onto the coronoid process. So when this muscle contracts, the temporalis muscle, it will pull up on the jaw by that, by that uh, coronoid process. All right, and the last slide for your chewing muscles or muscles of mastication, uh, muscles that perform this action, which we call grinding movements. Grinding movements is uh, kind of bringing your jaw like, like it go side to side. Um, in order to do that, we need pterygoid muscles. And there's two types of pterygoid muscles. There's a, two groups, I should say, a medial and a lateral pterygoid muscle. And you see them right here. Up top here, we have a lateral pterygoid kind of going downwards. Here is your medial pterygoid. And they uh, bring the jaw left and right uh, in that motion to uh, to help you grind. Um, your buccinator, which we mentioned earlier, which compresses the cheek, now we can see it real clearly, right? There's our, our cheek muscle. We didn't have a good picture last time. Um, it could play a role, role in chewing. Some textbooks don't consider it a chewing muscle. Some do. Uh, but it helps hold food between the teeth, right? Just like the pterygoids do. Um, so we'll just include it with our, our muscles of, of mastication.